Hi everyone, you're very welcome to this workshop as part of An Kort Krisrachte, the international harp festival held normally at Termen Fecken every year, but this year of course online. And thanks to Corjan Kritje for making it happen. Thanks also to Louth County Council and the Arts Council of Ireland for their support. And I've tried to make it as similar as possible to On Grianon, the beautiful home of the ICA, uh, as possible here with uh, the quilt on the wall and um, my cup of tea. So in this workshop, we'll be looking at chords and a left hand for the Carolyn tune, Charles O'Connor. Thurlico Carolyn was a 17th century harper composer. He travelled around Ireland composing tunes for patrons and his tunes survive not only in the oral tradition but also in many of the 19th century collections like those of George Petrie, James Goodman and Edward Bunting. Some of Carolyn's tunes were also published during his lifetime like in the collection by John and William Neal from 1724, the collection of the most celebrated Irish tunes and published fairly recently in a facsimile edition by Nicholas Carolyn. This tune, Charles O'Connor, was written by Carolyn for the son of a family in Balnagar in County Roscommon, and they were patrons of Carolyn. Charles was born in 1710 when Carolyn was 40, and he studied harp not only with Carolyn himself, but also with Mary Cannellan, who may have been related to the Cannellan brothers, the harper composers. And Charles also got tunes from a woman known as Blind Mary or Moira Gall. Charles kept a diary and in it you can see how he noted, especially in his late teenage years, when he got particular tunes and from whom. And he went on later in life to be a scholar of language and history. And you can find out more about Charles O'Connor and his family and their connection with Carolyn in the volume by Donal O'Sullivan, his two volumes, in fact, of the life and work of Terlico Carolyn. And that's where I got the version of the tune I'm using in the Hands Together arrangement to go with this workshop. And yesterday, you might have been working with Cormac de Barra on the tune. And here's his version with a little ornamentation and variation informed by his experience of the oral tradition. We play the tune together on our album Duopoly, which you can find online. Feel free to screenshot any parts of this video to get the score. You can print it off and follow the workshop or maybe have the screenshot handy on another device if that works for you. In the hands together version, I've also put in fingering and chord symbols. You're going to need your harp set in C major. So if it's normally tuned in E flat major, you're going to need to have your B's, E's and A levers up to make C major. I'm going to show you a left hand to go with the tune. Feel free to learn this by ear or following along in the music as you wish. You might like to pause the video at any stage to repeat some of the patterns a few times at any pace that's comfortable for you. So off we go. I'm going to play the first part of the tune just at a moderate pace, hands together, so you can hear how it all fits together and then we'll go through it slowly in small bits. Own. So we start off with the arpeggio of C placed one, two, three, four, C, G, E, C, and try this. So after you go down the arpeggio, then you go up in steps from C, D, E, up to F. Okay, so this much here one, two. And next time we're going to add on a G, a single G after that pattern. One, two. Try that again. One, two. And 
then in the next bar we have two chords F and C with one and three and then G B with one and two and they go one two one two so let's join those to the opening the arpeggio placed one two Now the next bit is so we have three notes here F E D place back to E and then place all the fingers down one two three four on E D C A I'll just give you that figure there one two three on F E D one two After you've played this chord here, then you just go up the same chord, just up to C and E with one and two. So now try adding the C and E on after that figure. So starting from F, E, D. And try that once more, it'll count you in. One, two. Let's try all that much from the beginning. One, two. Well done. And now the next bit is a single B. And then we have three notes G, F, E. And you place them back. So single B, and now we try it together, I'll catch you in, one, two, and then the very last bar of that whole first half of the tune is, so one and two on F and D, and one and three on G and C. So just going from the single note B there, one, Two. So now the next thing we're going to do is we're going to do the whole first part straight through. Okay, one, two. Let's do that once more. I'm going to play the right hand above it as well so you can hear how it fits together. One, two. to the second part and we start with four notes in steps so if you're following in the music this is bar nine or the beginning of the second part so C B A G with one two three four one uh, and here we go and try that with me one two well done and the next bar is so that's F and C with one and three, and then F, E with one and two. One, two, and let's put those two bars together. So the steps from C, one, two, and then the next bar is the arpeggio of A minor. Just A, C, E, A with all four fingers. One, two. And now let's go from the beginning of the B part or bar nine. One, two. Lovely, 
Let's try that again. One, two. Three, four. Now the next part has two groups of four fingers in a row. I'll just show you. And the advantage of using all four fingers is you don't have to cross, all, cross under as often at all. And you've only two groups of notes instead of many more groups. So I'll give you that once more. So that's actually three bars of material if you're looking at the score, it's bars 12 to 14. So you have four on D, three on F, two on G and one on A. And you're going to cross the fourth under straight away to B. And when you've done that, you pop your three onto middle C, your two onto E and your thumb up to G. Okay, but the notes get longer as the phrase goes on. One, two. And some people might find it useful to tap that before playing it like this. One, two. So it's a great idea to tap your pieces through as well, or maybe play one hand and tap the other and then swap it around. The next bar is simply three notes, G, F, D. After that, straightforward enough as well. B, C, D, going down to G. One, two. Let's put those two short bars together. So G, F, D, one, two. Now let's put those groups of four notes before that and see can we put them together. Okay, so starting on D, F, G, A, and this is the bit where we cross the fourth under to B straight away. One, two. Well done. And now we're on to the last four bars of the tune. And we have this bar here, E, F, G. We've actually had this earlier, just towards the end of the first part of the tune as well. So E, F, G plays with three, two, one. Okay, and then the next bar is C, B, A. In the same timing. So those two bars together, E, F, G first, and then up to C. One, two. And then after that, you go back to the C to the E F G again. Okay, so let's just try that from the E F G up to C, back to E F G, and then the very last bar is the same as the last bar of the first part of the tune. D F with one two. C, G with three and one. And now let's work backwards a little. And if you're following the score, this is bar 15. So we're halfway through the B part of the tune. So G, F, E, one, two. Going to add on those two groups of four fingers okay and then continue from where we picked up the last time so this is d f g a with four fingers in a row and we're going to cross the fourth under to b again all right one two on the beginning of the B part of the tune. One, two.
And one of the lovely things about Carolyn is that he doesn't always go in 16 bar tunes. This tune is 20 bars long and he has these nice little phrase extensions and sequences and that in the tune that you'll have looked at already if you've been working on the tune. So let's try now the whole B part of the left hand. One, two. the score you'll see these uh, little tick signs after some of the notes and that means that you can let go that you don't have to place to the next note uh, for example where it goes you can let go before placing that arpeggio rather than going like that okay and it keeps the left hand loose if you let go now and again but it also gets a lovely legato if you place so we try and strike a balance between those two things so now, so now that we've done a left hand to the tune and we've done chord symbols, it's nice to frame the arrangement with an introduction. So here's a sample one that I wrote. It goes like this. And so on into the tune then, okay? So let's have a look at the right hand of those four bars of the introduction, E, F, G, with three, two, one, and then up to C with two and one. And just try that with me. One, two. And then after that, you put your thumb on A and two and three to G and F. there I placed my thumb up to D because that second bar goes like this so that's A G F jumping up to D with the thumb and then a 3 2 1 on D E F I'll just give you that and try it with me one two Well done. And let's put those two bars together, starting on E, F, G. One, two. Well done. And then when you've done the, put your fingers all back on the strings in steps and that'll take you back down to C like this. So you steps down to C and then the triad down to C, G, E, C. So let's try it from those short notes, the D, E, F, and it'll go one, two, in like that. Okay, I'll give you that again. Ready on D, E, F, one, two. Well done, try that again. D, E, F, ready with three, two, one, one, two. And you'll see there that what I'm placing after I do one, two, three, I put one over to B, two on A and four on G. And we skip the finger because we need to get our fingers up in steps to C for the opening of the tune itself. And that's how this goes. And then you're into the tune. So do you want to try that with me? So once you cross over to B, you're in steps, just watch out for the one, two, four and then you place them all back, okay? So we'll try it from G, E, C with one, two, three. And this time I'll give you a two and a one because we're coming in halfway through the bar. Two, one. Well done. And now let's just isolate that last bar. We'll do one, two, four, just to get used to placing the three back. So on B, A, G, ready with one, two, four, one, two. That's great. And now we're going to do all four bars in the right hand straight through. One, 
two. Now I'll show you the left hand of it and it's quite straightforward. You just place C, E and F and after that we're going to go to D. So C, E, F, D and it goes like this. One, two. And then to a long G. So you want to just try those first few notes. So C, E and F. Ready. And they're all just dotted crotchets or dotted quarter notes one beat each in this time signature. One, two. And you might as well place onto the G because that's the next note is gonna be a dotted half note, all right? One, two. And then the very last bar of the intro on the left hand is just this fifth chord, G and D with three and one. So let's just try the whole intro in the left hand. One, two. Well done. And just try that again. I'll play the right hand above it so you'll hear how it fits together. One, two. Now to finish off we're going to play the intro once more and then we'll go on into the tune all the way through so you can hear the whole thing hanging together. One, two. enjoying the workshops of this festival. Do take a look at the Cordia Nacritia website for all the festival details. Have a look at the lunchtime concerts and the evening concerts and also pop over to the websites of the individual artists so you can have a look at the CDs and the books that they've made. Enjoy! <laughs>